Hello everyone, we are finally back with another ICER video. This time sharing the career journeys of two ICER alumni. For folks who are new on this channel, I am Sonia. And I am Deepak. And we are ex-graduates from ICER Mohali, currently working as engineers for a semiconductor company called Intel in the United States of America. You can find more information about our backgrounds from our previous videos on our channel. We will link the entire IC playlist in the description below. So make sure to check that out after this video. You guys have taken great interest in the IC content on our channel. Thank you for that and have been requesting us to post more such videos. That's why we are starting a brand new series on our channel called Voices of ICER, where we will be asking ICER alumni about their career journeys since they've graduated from ICER. Lot of you who are currently enrolled in ICER or have been aspiring to join ICER in the near future have been interested in knowing about the kind of job opportunities offered directly after BSMS or after a PhD. And what's better than hearing straight from the horse's mouth? <laughs> Therefore, in this video and future videos in this series, you will be hearing from ICERites of various fields and different ICERs within India. And hopefully, this will make you feel comfortable about choosing ICER after 12th standard and help you get clarity on your future after ICER. We will be posting more such interviews and ICER related content on our channel, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now without any further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Vidit Agrawal. I am an alumni from ICER Mohali. I graduated in 2014. I graduated with my master's in physics. Hi, I'm Nitya. I studied in ICER Kolkata and, I, and my uh, major was chemistry. 2008 was my entry level batch, so we were called 08 MS. I joined ICER primarily because uh, I was actually looking for opportunities that are in research area. I did the IIT JE at that time, which is the entrance for all around India IITs. And uh, I somehow didn't want to go to the traditional path. And this seemed like a nice opportunity. And my method of joining was actually through IIT at that time. They used to extend, do something called an extended list and give you an opportunity to do counseling. So I did my counseling at ICER Mohali, liked it, and then eventually decided to join. Entrance method was uh, IITJ uh, exam, basically, and uh, we, there was an extended merit list through which they were taking admissions to IASCR. Um, and so that's how we actually first heard of ICER. We didn't actually know about them too much. The plan was to do engineering, but uh, my dad always believed that you should go outside and study, like not in the same place that you wanted brought up with. After my BSMS, I chose the traditional path of uh, doing PhD. Most of my friends were doing PhD and one of the possible options was to go to America. I applied to a bunch of places, wrote letters to a bunch of professors, got a call back from University of Arkansas where I saw some good interest from the professor. I liked his field. He was working in computational neuroscience and it seemed to be an interesting choice. And uh, just because I wanted to pursue this more, I had not thought about what my career will be. Uh, so I just took a leap of faith and uh, you know, decided to extend doing research further into my PhD. It took me about five years to complete the PhD there. Uh, Half of it was spent in my coursework because in USA you have to go through your coursework again. And while you're doing your coursework, I started my research early. And towards my fifth year, I kind of focused mostly on finding a job and finishing up whatever uh, you know papers we had written and then literature that you have to complete. So my final year was kind of just uh, spent half in my research and half in my looking for jobs. My decision to choose, as I said, I had not really thought much about my future. I knew this was one of the potential uh, opportunities I can avail. This would self-fund me. I think that was the biggest motivation. I would say that uh, 
I needed to earn money and at least live by on myself and not take money from my parents. So after BSMS, wanted to do a PhD. It looked like the most obvious option for me. Applied to a bunch of schools in the US, and I was very clear that I wanted to go to the US and do my PhD because that's where my brother also was. I applied to several schools. Uh, finally, ended up uh, going to UIUC, which is University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, with a focus in biomaterials. The lab itself did a lot of. Uh, biochemistry like protein engineering and they also did like material synthesis and sensors and analytical chemistry so a mix of all of that it took me exactly five years because i <laughs> micromanaged it a lot i wanted to make sure that i had a job towards the end of the fifth year uh, and i was very clear i wanted to go into industry to be brutally honest uh, i didn't see any other um, clear path for myself there were a lot of seniors who did uh, write the cat exam and they did go into that area of uh, you know mba and stuff but for me it seemed like the most obvious path to uh, do a phd um, and i was like remotely interested in actually doing some research that had applications so I was like okay let's just do that. After I completed my PhD the biggest hurdle for me to transition was to transition into industry and uh, as a physics graduate who had computational background data science was the closest thing where I could transition to and how I did it was through these data bootcamp courses one was called Insight Fellowship, which primarily functions as like a attache to people who are doing postdocs and transition them into data science jobs across industries. One of those companies was Wayfair. Wayfair is a furniture supplier company like Amazon, but they hire a lot of scientists from all across Massachusetts. And I was interviewed by them through that uh, fellowship program. That was my first job. And for the first two years, I was a marketing data scientist. First thing and the foremost thing I learned was how to communicate, especially in a broader audience and how to essentially cater to the audience. Coming from physics, my communication was not that great. I think that first couple of years was a real shock for me and actually prepared me well for my, for my next role which right now is at Intel. I am a software research engineer slash scientist and my job primarily is to create mathematical models, run machine learning simulations, run design of experiments. Everything actually is taught at ISIL. Now I look back at what I studied, I just think I should have paid more attention. Every single course I took, I can look back and the literature, the things that we were taught, they align perfectly. Even, you know, simplest things like eigenvalue derivation. In retrospect, I do think I still did a great service to me and, you know, all my career. So I uh, work at Intel, which is of course a semiconductor industry. What I did in my PSMS or my PhD is not directly relevant to what I do right now. But what, the things that do come in use are the soft skills, the communication skills. You know, if you're stuck in a project, getting help from others, uh, being able to talk to people that you need to talk to, just being able to communicate what you're feeling, what the problems are, doing some experimental design, you know, just analyzing your data. All of these are the skills that you do get from your PhD and even BSMS when you work in a lab and do experiments. So those things are very, very useful and those are what uh, a job, you know, a job really asks you for here in a fab. For anyone right now in ICER or who has graduated from ICER, my first advice would be to keep an open mind. Take your first job, go into that career, just be open about any opportunity you get. I do think in the world right now, you don't get that many opportunities when you need them, but the experience always helps. For me, primarily my years at Wayfair helped me in my current role. My years in my PhD where I did a lot of computational neuroscience prepared me for my current role. My years at ISER also prepared me for my current role. The second advice would be always keep on learning. Don't think that, you know, now you have done five years of masters and your study is done. 
one thing that I saw trained me well was how to pre quickly prepare for anything overnight. I have done a lot of all-nighters. One time I missed an exam just because I was pulling an all-nighter. In our job, it's very technical, so you have to keep on learning new things. So don't be averse to that and have an open mind. There were a few things which I personally thought I should have known before, you know, I actually got in, into doing a PhD. One of them was uh, know the field that is kind of popular with recruiters in your field. So, so in chemistry, polymer was a very big field and a lot of these big companies like 3M, Dow, um, that would come to recruit, they would recruit from labs which did polymer chemistry. If you are keen on uh, going into an industry after your PhD, you probably want to look for you know labs that do uh, industry focused projects. A lot of people do internships, that also helps a lot. Of course this is, you'll have to discuss this with your advisor. Some advisors are not open to it, some ad advisors are very open to it. University resources can be very very helpful. Always pick up something that you maybe want to do because you have a better understanding of what, where your interests are at this point. Not really in your undergrad. In undergrad a lot of people don't know what they want to do but when you come to grad school you kind of have an idea of what interests you. So just look around for you know things that interest you, opportunities, talk to recruiters, networking is big. It really helps make friends, um, use your friends. It comes a long way. Thank you for watching episode one of our Voices of ICER series. Vidit and Nitya are great examples who showed that ICER played a key role in hitting the various milestones in their career. They both have outdone themselves and Deepak and I wish them all the best for the future. Hope you got a better understanding of what you should be looking for if you are an undergrad and how to plan better for future opportunities if you want a career in the industry. Relentless hard work, making timely connections within your network and expanding your reach through communications is the key here. If you found this video useful, then give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We will be back next time with more such interviews. So stay tuned. See you next time.